Hey guys, welcome to the inheritance tutorial. This has been requested a few times on the Facebook page, so let's get right into it. So let me introduce you to three friends of mine, Birdo, Camel and Dave. A bird, a cat and a fish. All of them are what we'll call creatures. Our goal today is going to make them do stuff with general comments, so basically without even knowing which one I'm talking to, I like to either ask them to move, talk or jump. So how do we get to do this in a programming context? We'll have to use inheritance, so let's talk about it. In our example, we said that all three of our friends are going to be what we'll call creatures, and our commands we want to send them are move, talk, and jump. This is something all three of them are going to have in common, so let's write it down in our creature definition. Now at this point in time, if we place the script we just made, the creature definition script, on all three of our friends, they're all going to have the same behavior, which is obviously a bit weird, because a bird doesn't move the same way as a fish. So yeah, how do we go more in depth and define this move comment, but for the bird only, or the fish only, or the cat only? We are going to create what we call a children class. So the children class is basically just a class that inherits from creature. By doing this, it pretty much just replicates the code of the creature in our own class, However, this is transparent to us, and uh, we don't really see it. All we see is that fancy colon after the declaration of our bird class. And then in that class, using some special keywords that we'll see really soon, we are able to overwrite the move function that our creature has declared in the past, and uh, create our own custom behavior for Birdo. So before we jump into the code and define those special keywords I've just mentioned, I'd like to drop in some example we've used throughout the channel. Here's one. For the chess tutorial, every piece is where what we call chessmans. And um, it's basically just a base class that contains a definition for moving. However, this whole moving mechanic in chess is pretty much different for every single pieces because they move in a different pattern. So I've had children classes for every single pieces that would define their own movement. And I was still able to refer to them as chessmans. In another example, in the third-person tower defense game, I have something I call base tower, which is pretty much just a class that has some general function for every tower, such as shoot, reload, sell. It's basically a class that defines action that all my towers have in common. Alright, so let's move on to the coding part of the video now. If you don't really understand inheritance yet, then do tag along, I will explain the keywords as I write them down, and I will also show you a real example which is going to help you quite a lot figure out how this works. Alright guys, so let's get started. Alright, so here we are in the engine. Let me just show you what I've got over here. I've got this nice little setup where um, I've got all my three friends over here and they all have a button to talk and they all have a button to jump and they will automatically move uh, on their own. Now every single button is linked to say um, these two buttons are linked to the bird, these two buttons are linked to the cat and the last two are linked to the fish. The way this works, I'm simply going to show you the, the, the actual script really quickly. It's a simple send message that I do on those. So I made an arrow transform, I put all my creatures in there. And uh, whenever I click on the first move button, it uh, actually calls this function with the creature index 0. Now the second one, it calls it with the creature index 1, and so on. That's like really simple stuff. And right now I'm getting an error when I click on those because my bird doesn't have a definition for talk. In fact, any of those, they don't have any definitions at all. So, like we said in the theory, let's get started and actually create a uh, class for creatures. So we'll head over here, create a new c chart script that we'll call creature. And now let's quickly define what is a creature. So... Uh, I'm going to start by declaring some fields here. So a private transform, this transform, private vector three, start position, private vector, actually private float, vertical velocity. Now I'm simply defining a creature. All of them, I think, in my head are going to have a start position, so I can do like some moving mechanic, and also a uh, vertical velocity, so they can actually have some kind of jump mechanic as well. 
And now, of course, this does not really have anything to do with inheritance, but um, you'll see why we do this in a short moment. I'll start by just saying this transform is equal to transform, and start position is equal to this transform dot position. All right. So we told ourselves that every single creature are going to have a definition for move, talk, and jump. Let's go ahead and declare those. And now, since we know that this is going to be um, this might be reused in a children class like we saw in the theory the keyword we're gonna use is a little bit different so we're used to private and uh, public however what we're gonna use this time is something we call protected now protected makes it private in general so every, every it's like the exact same thing as private however your children class so in, the, in this case bird or cat or fish are going to be able to access this so it's pretty much private for everybody but your children. This is what the keyword protected is used for. And now the next keyword is a little bit weird and um, we'll just skip it for now but write it down. We'll do protected virtual void and then we'll create move, the move function. Let's go ahead and copy this two more times. This is going to be the talk and the next one is going to be the jump. Now back in our game, I will go ahead and just drag and drop the creator script on top of every single one of these, like this, and we're going to start defining, say, the talk function. Now whenever I say talk to those, I like to have a debug.log that says, oops, I can't write today, creature says, good times, or something like that. Let's quickly test this out, see if everything works. Um, in my code. So creature says good time when I press on this. Now if I press on the one for the cat, it says the exact same thing. And if I press on the one for the fish, again, creature says good times. Nice. We are now going to code a simple move function. Of course, this could have been anything, but uh, I want to give you an example with move because it's one of the most used. Well, it's not really one of the most used, but on this channel, I usually do inheritance when it comes down to creating some kind of character controller so I can have a character controller that moves using my inputs and a character controller that moves using um, some kind of input I calculated like a, an actual AI so quickly I will do the position is equal to start position plus vector 3 dot right times matf dot sin and let's do sin time time then use the vertical velocity to say minus equal 14 times time the delta time if the vertical velocity is smaller than zero vertical velocity is equal to zero now the position dot y is going to equal vertical velocity plus start position dot y and finally this transform the position is equal to plus okay I'm going to repeat myself, like I said earlier, this does not really matter with inheritance at all. We're just creating some kind of movement that every creature is going to assume, for now at least. And in the jump, I will simply say, vertical velocity is equal to something like 2. Alright. Now, um, this is not actually going to work, I need to quickly put in a update in here, so private void update, and every single frame, let's actually move. So I'll just say move. All right, so right now all the creatures have the same behavior. So they all go from left to right. They all say good times and they all jump like in a really weird manner. Um, let's actually start by defining the talk because that's the easiest one. We only do a debug.log. We're going to make everyone say a different thing. And to do that, we are going to override the actual function. So we're going to have to totally override this function, forget about what's in there, and just redefine it for every single one of those creatures. So let's go ahead and do that right away. We are going to take the bird over here. We're going to start with this guy. So right click in your script somewhere, create a new C-sharp script, and this is going to be bird. Now open it up, and this is what we're going to be doing this time. We're going to be removing everything in here, and this is the special way that um, you actually work with inheritance. So next to the column, you're gonna delete model behavior. You don't need it anymore, and you're gonna say this is a creature. 
And now let me show you what this did in the actual back end. So back on my bird, you see this creature script over here? We're gonna get rid of it completely so it's gone. Now if I press play, this thing doesn't really do anything anymore. Let's drag and drop the bird on top of it and press play. It actually assumes the same exact thing we had in uh, the creature script. So in bird, right now, there's actually a start, there's actually an update, there's a move being called every frame, and uh, the talk and the jump actually works as well. As you can tell, the creature still says good times. So we pretty much copied over everything that was in the creature script, and we moved it here. However, it's really transparent, we don't see it, but that's pretty much what happened. Alright, so let's keep learning. The next keyword I want to teach you guys is both the virtual and the override. So when we created our, um, let's go with the talk one. When we created our talk function, I just you know told you to write this keyword down. Now, what this means exactly is it's going to actually make this uh, look for other function in front of it. So say this is the parent class, we have the creature class. Having the keyword virtual over here is going to force this class to look in its children to find if there is another, um, if there's an override for this function. So the first keyword is virtual, and the second keyword is override. So we did a protected virtual, now this time we're going to do a protected override, and let me just show you this. So I'm going to hit tab once, spacebar, and it, it pretty much gives me these three options right here, the jump, the move, and the talk. Right now we want to override the talk function, so I'm just going to hit tab again and it's going to autocomplete everything for me. Let's actually play this now, see what happens. It has the base.talk in it. Creature says, good time, so nothing different, everything is the exact same, so how do we even tell that this one is the one that has been called? Well, we're going to do a debug log, um, debug.log, and we're going to say, bird says, um, what do birds say? Bird says Dave. Okay, doesn't really matter. Let's actually test this out now and uh, see the order of, of our code. And now it says, creature says good times, and then bird says Dave. So this code over here is being run. And um, if you go back here, this is also being run. And the reason this is being run is because we have the base.talk. So it's pretty much calling the base function that it override and it's running it anyway. Now, usually we don't run with this. We just override the whole thing. And now this way, it actually only says, bird says Dave. So we've successfully completely destroyed this function for the bird and redefined it in this single class. Now, does the bird need anything else? Alright, so the next thing we'll do is actually change the movement of that bird, so it's a little bit different. Right now, it goes left to right like every other creature, and that's, that's a little bit boring. So what we'll do is we'll go down here, we'll do another protected override, and we'll do protected override move. So let's actually take a look at what we're doing right now. So we just take this, we move from left to right, and uh, we also apply the vertical velocity. What we're going to be doing for the bird is we're actually going to use his transform and uh, make it go up and down as well. So what I'll be doing is I will be using this transform, you know, the transform we've been defining in Creature. However, it is on private. Now, what you could do is turn this on public and actually go back in here and just say this transform. It exists. It pretty much just exists because it's part of the Creature and the code has been kind of copy-paste. So uh, you could say this transform.position and actually change it, but what we'll do is uh, to make sure it's not public, we can do a protected on those field as well. Now this way we're able to use it from here and nobody else sees it. So we're gonna say this transform.position plus equal vector three dot up mathf.sin, and we're going to do another time.time. .time. Just like this. And hopefully this makes sense. Let's go back here and have a look. And it does. So we modified the behavior of this bird and only this bird. 
Nice, so we've got the talk working, Bird says Dave, the jump still does something really weird. In fact, I don't really want to have a jump on the bird, so what we'll do, protected, override, jump, and we'll just wipe what's in there, and it's just empty now. If we go back here, our bird doesn't jump anymore, he still talks, he still moves in a weird way, and we pretty much redefine all the three functions for the bird. Now, redefining all of those functions is not something that you always need to do, because we also create some, when, when we do our um, base creature, when we do our creature, we create virtual function that would work for pretty much, well, most of people. And sometimes there are some special flowers like this bird who needs to have a different behavior for moving. But the jump function we've put in here could actually do the job for the cat without even having to redefine it, override it. We can just leave it there and it's going to be doing the job for the cat. And um, that's what we're going to be having in mind when we create our new script. So let's go ahead and create that for the cat. So let's go on the cat now. I'm going to remove the creature. Really, really important that you remove that creature script and then put on the cat. Now the cat is going to inherit from creature and it's not going to override the um, move function, it's not going to override the jump function. Let's make it only override the talk function. And this one is going to say debug.log I am camel. We go back in the game, he still moves left to right He's still able to jump, but now when he talks, he actually says, I am camel. And bird says, Dave, jump doesn't work on this guy. Now we're going to use a last keyword, a really important keyword in fact. It's called the abstract keyword. And I'm just going to go back into my creature script and actually show you what this is. So um, you see how we define a function for say talk. We see protected, virtual void. And then we actually put a content, we actually put a body in that function. So in case it doesn't find anything to override, then it just runs this. But sometimes you don't want to have some default code running. Sometimes you want your children to have a definition. You want them to actually have this uh, function they have in common, but they're all going to have something different. What you can do in that case is drop the virtual, and instead of being virtual, it is going to be what we call abstract. Now, when you define an abstract function, it must not have a body, so this needs to get out, and we just write it this way. Now here is what is going to happen if you don't define a body, and you have this script attached somewhere. You have a abstract function, but it is declared in a non-abstract class called creature. That pretty much means that as soon as you have a single abstract field or abstract function, the class up here, the, the actual class, needs to be abstract as well. So public abstract class creatures. Once that's done, you go back here and you realize that you have another really big bug. When you have a abstract class, you're not allowed to simply drag and drop this on an object, as you can tell. If I just try to drag and drop this back on my fish, it says the script class cannot be abstract. And that totally makes sense because we have some non-defined function in there. And if the code tries to run that, it's simply going to crash. So how do we go about fixing this? Well, it's fairly simple. So if you have an abstract class, you're not going to be able to put it on anything. You're not going to be able to um, run the code on its own. It absolutely needs to run through a children class. So we're going to go ahead and define that. Right click here, create a fish class. And now we put this on the fish double click on it, make it inherit from creature, and that pretty much inherits from creature, so it should work, right? However, we haven't really defined the talk um, function on this guy. So here is what it's going to say. It's going to say fish does not implement the abstract member creature.talk. So the compiler is going to force you to actually override that class. So inside of our fish, we're going to do a public override, not jump, public override talk, and here you go, so you're going to be typing in something in here, so debug.log ibfish, comma bro, okay. And now this way you're not going to get any more errors down here, 
and you can go back to actually running your code. Plus, this one has a definition too now. So whenever he talks, he says, I be fish, bro. I am camel. And bird says Dave. The jump code still runs. Everything still works. Same thing as before. However, we now use inheritance to actually give three different behavior to those three different creatures. And now you might be wondering, why exactly did we do that? Why didn't we just create a bird class, a cat class, and a fish class? Well, as you can tell with the fish, we pretty much save a lot of space by just typing in these three lines instead of typing the whole creature script and like having this whole move behavior. So that's pretty cool. We were able to, we were able to save some code space. Now, what's really cool on top of that is that you can define them all as creature. So you don't have to say, oh, this is a fish. Oh, this is a cat. This is a bird. You can just say creatures. So randomly on any script, I could create a public creature array. I'll just call them CS for now. And uh, if you go on that script, which is right here in my case, all I need to send in are actual creatures. And um, even if this is a fish or a bird or a cat, if we drag and drop them in here, it's still going to assume that they are creatures. And that's fairly cool because if you're on your control panel and you just go say you create a new function really quickly, a public void update, and then you say um, if input dot get key down, if I press on the key A, then I want all my creatures. So for each creature C in CS, CS dot talk. And now this is not going to work for a um, a really obvious reason. Let me just show you real quick. The reason why this is not going to work right here in the code is because talk is actually protected. Now if I go back over to creature and I say, well talk, I want this to be public. I'm now able to actually call it from somewhere else. So if I just go back on my control panel really quickly, this should now work. And they don't seem to have a definition. Let me just check why. Oh, it's probably because I haven't changed the modifier in other classes. So if you do change it um, up here, you need to change it in the children as well. So this is now a public override void talk. Same thing goes here. And same thing goes there. And if I quickly go back here and um, why does that not work? Oh, sorry. So a uh, creature for every single creature C, I can do a C dot talk. So basically when I press on the key A on my keyboard, it's going to iterate through every single creature there is. And I don't know if it's a fish, I don't know if it's a bird, I don't know if it's like three different cats, I don't really care. I want all of them to talk at the same time. And that is what um, this is going to force basically. So if I go in my game now and I press on my key A, bird says Dave, I am camel and I be fish bro. So we pretty much managed to make them all talk at the same time without even knowing what kind of creature they were. So that's pretty cool and inheritance is pretty cool as well. You should get the hang of it as soon as possible. And it is used pretty much everywhere in video games so of course it's not something you want to miss out on. So guys, I hope you enjoy, I hope you learned something. If you didn't quite catch it yet, please let me know in the comment and uh, we'll try to get some explanation going down there as well. So if you guys enjoyed this, if you liked it, please give me a like. Really appreciate that. If any comment or question, please leave them in the comment section below. Other than that, please subscribe for more tutorials like these, and I will see you guys next time.